if you can process fatty acids or ketones or carbs through your digestive system, that is digestive flexibility. That is not metabolic flexibility. Metabolism has to do with the breakdown for energy and the utilization of macronutrients for metabolic function. What's going on, everybody? It's Coach Bronson here, and we're going to talk about a fun thing today, metabolic flexibility. There's a lot of discussion about this going around. There are articles and videos and books and all the topics and all the conversation about how to optimize your body's ability to process multiple sources of fuel. It's probably not what you think it is, and I'm going to explain to you why. Before I get into that, please subscribe to this channel. Click on the bell so you're notified every single time I come out with a new video. There's at least two a week. And most importantly, share this information out with somebody who you think is looking for, hopefully, great uh, health and wellness and fitness information that can help them improve their quality of life. All right, metabolic flexibility. What in the world are we talking about? We are talking about your body's ability to process different macronutrients. Essentially, that's really what it comes down to. And think about all the, the terms, the terminology, and the, the switching back and forth from fuel. How well does your body process carbs and fat? That's what we're talking about. And access ATP when it's needed. Okay. So to lay the groundwork, I want to try not to get super exercise science here, right? We're not going to get into all the deep stuff, right? I want to keep it at a high level. There are three, I'm going to say there are four main energy pathways, okay? And I'm saying four, and I'm saying that I'm going to say four because I have been working on something, uh, researching what, what is commonly called the fourth fuel ketones and how ketones are utilized for energy is often not included when we talk about energy pathways. Usually when we talk about energy pathways, we talk about ATP, phosphagene, glycolytic pathway and oxidative pathway, fatty acid oxidation. We don't talk about ketones. I'm trying to change that. I'm going to start talking about that more often. There is something called the ketolytic pathway. There is something that is specific to how ketones are utilized to create ATP. Uh, and that needs to be included in the conversation, particularly when we're talking about metabolic flexibility. So there's four energy pathways. I just said them, right? ATP, glycogen or glucose, ketones, and fat. Yes, ketones and fat are not the same thing. Now, when we talk about your body's ability to jump back and forth between these things, what a lot of people think metabolic flexibility is because unfortunately, I think there's been a convolution or a conflation of the definitions or how this term is used. Many people are calling metabolic flexibility, calling it out when they're talking about carb cycling. I'm going to eat some carbs so that my body gets better and more metabolically flexible. That is not metabolic flexibility. Metabolic flexibility has nothing to do with your macronutrients. Mm, think about that. Metabolic flexibility has nothing to do with what you eat because it happens on the other side at the energy creation mechanism within the body that is macro agnostic. It doesn't matter what the macro is. Okay. When we talk about the mechanisms where ATP is actually created, it's a substrate that can come from many macronutrients, but when it gets to that side, it has nothing to do with your macros. Okay. So basically if you can process fatty acids or ketones or carbs through your digestive system, that is digestive flexibility. That is not metabolic flexibility. Metabolism has to do with the breakdown for energy and the utilization of macronutrients for metabolic function. Breaking down food sources, breaking down macronutrients into the bloodstream, into the body, through the gut, through the intestine, that is digestive flexibility. If I only eat plant-based foods, when I start eating meat, I have a problem. My body cannot process meat well, and I have to get it to a point where it can process meat, and then I can eat meat and I can eat veggies. Now I am meat veggie flexible, I guess you could say, right? That's the concept I want you to understand here. If you have been super low carb, maybe low carb, high fat, whatever it is, 
and you haven't been eating carbs for a while, your body has gotten very used to processing fat and utilizing fat for fuel. But guess what it's also doing? If you're not eating carbs, it is creating its own glycogen and glucose for you to use for energy when it needs it. On the metabolic side of the equation, even if you are low carb, your body already has glucose available for fuel. That is the whole reason that we can be ketogenic and not die. We cannot say that we have to eat carbs in order to be metabolically flexible because we don't have to eat carbs because our body can make glucose as needed. That's what allows us to be ketogenic in the first place. Okay. I will please understand that what happens in the gut has nothing to do with what happens in the metabolism. Very distinct processes. Okay. When we talk about what we're eating, again, it's digestive flexibility. If, I, if I'm not eating carbs and I put some in, it may be a while before my body gets used to it. I may have some gut issues. I may have some things I need to work out. My body may not like certain things at all ever, and I can't eat those. Right. That's all happening over here. My body's already, okay. This is similar to my fasting discussion. If you are ketogenic, get this, guys. If you are following a whole boots, whole boost, whole foods, animal based, adequate fat, adequate protein diet, you are already metabolically flexible. You're already there. By definition, you have to be, otherwise, you would die. If you did not have the ability to produce, generate, and utilize your own stores of glucose, you would die. That's just how it is. You have to be metabolically flexible in order to be living on a ketogenic diet. It has nothing to do with what you eat. Hey there, I wanted to let you know about my latest book, Body Confident, that's coming out in September 2024. Call it a critical thinking guide to your health journey because it is a framework, a guide, a blueprint that's going to help you understand and be able to filter all the information that's out there on the internet that you're getting from social media, YouTube, go to bodyconfidentbook.com. Now, how do we optimize metabolic flexibility? This is the cool part. This is the thing where we combine nutrition and fitness. Okay. You can optimize metabolic flexibility by exercise because you can target specifically which energy pathway your body is using and you can make it better at using that pathway, better at replenishing the energy that needs for that pathway. So if I want to improve the ATP phosphogene system, I need to do more work that requires ATP phosphogene in that short burst strength work. I need to do a lot of strength work, heavy reps, sorry, heavy weight for short reps, one, two, and three reps, go super heavy, right? Or do a lot of power work, a lot of short sprints, bursts of energy. Okay. If I want to improve my body's ability to utilize and replenish glucose without having to eat more carbs, then I need to do more glycolytic work. I need to do more work in that two, two minute or more range, two to 20, depends on who you talk to, two to 20 minutes of higher intensity work where my body is primarily using glucose for fuel. If I want to optimize ketones, the ketolytic pathway, then somewhere between that two minutes and the plus 20 minutes that we traditionally call fatty acid oxidation, there's a range, range to be defined because the science isn't out there yet. Okay. Where ketones, in my theory, Again, this is the ketone part of this discussion is my theory of the research that I've done. I'm saying there's a ketolytic pathway somewhere in the, let's say, 5 to 20 range, 5 to 15 minute range where it's mostly ketones that are being processed. You get good at using ketones. Okay? That's another video for another day. And then anything longer than that, now we're talking about fatty acids and we're burning fat specifically. All right. So we talk about we can work in specific ranges of intensity and time and get better at utilizing all the different fuels that our body has available. We can optimize metabolic flexibility by the work that we do in our fitness exercise plan, not by what we eat outside of cutting out carbs. All you got to do, be ketogenic. Again, whole foods, animal-based, adequate fat, adequate protein. And you will immediately begin to improve metabolic flexibility. If you add 
exercise to that and you target various ranges. That's why I like to do varied workouts. I don't always do the same thing. Sometimes I do a 45 minute workout. Sometimes I do a five minute workout. I can target different pathways. I can target different metabolic systems by doing that to increase and maintain my metabolic flexibility. Metabolic flexibility is about your body's ability to generate, access, and replenish its own fuel sources. Okay. Now, obviously we have to eat fat and protein in order for that to happen, but we don't have to eat carbs. So when I say it's not about what we eat, what I'm saying is your body's ability to change between the different pathways and utilize the different fuels has nothing to do with what we eat. That's happening all the time. Okay. What we do with it is how we make it better. Hope that makes sense. All right, guys, take it easy. I'll see you in the next video. Hey there, did you know that I have a free community on Discord? If you go to discord.coachbronson.com, you can join my community. You can meet other people. You can engage in a group of individuals who are all searching for and having success in finding their context and the solutions that will work best for them. Hop yourself in there, discord.coachbronson.com. See you soon.